Greetings, adventurers, and welcome back to the Den of the Drake. Other dragons hoard gold while I hoard internet cringe. If there's one lesson that you should take from the RPG Horror Story subreddit, it's that setting boundaries isn't something that just should be encouraged, it's something that should be required. A disciplined life is a happy one, and setting those rules and limits for yourself is something that is not only reasonable, but also healthy. Unfortunately, not everyone thinks this way. Yes, dear listener, there are people out there who interpret these boundaries as selfish. And it's not always the cartoonishly fat and sweaty neckbeard either. Sometimes it's your best friend of 20 years. Don't believe me? Well, it just so happens that a poor bastard on Reddit just went through that exact same thing. Why? Because the dude wanted to go to bed at a good time. The story I have for you today stars a player who wanted to give up their people-pleasing ways only for their best friend to try and veto it. Yeah, it's just about as unreasonable as it sounds. Now, without any further delay, let's go ahead and dive right into the horrifying world of r slash RPG Horror Stories. Enjoy. This week's story comes to us from Reddit user Jamestown25 and is titled, 20 Year Friendship Ends Over My Bedtime. The TLDR is literally the title. Warning, this is a long one, but if you want to find out how this shit went down, read on. I played a druid in my first and last campaign with two longtime friends, Cleric, who was one of my best friends since college, and the DM, who I was friends with for several years and was Cleric's best friend. The rest of the party was a paladin and a rogue. Rogue was played by user Wonkavator83 and a bard. All of us are in our 30s. Our campaign was supposed to be just for fun, according to our DM and Cleric. Our session started once every two weeks at around 8 p.m. Cleric had to get his kids to bed, so he couldn't start any earlier than 8, and the party obliged. The end of the session was not specified, but generally we went to about 11 o'clock or midnight. Me being in my late 30s, I'm not recovering from these late nights as easily as I did when I was younger. Even though it's bi-weekly, I like to get to bed early, and honestly, two hours of D&D is more than enough for me in one session. Now a little necessary backstory about myself. I've been a people pleaser my entire life, so of course I don't say anything about the late nights bothering me initially. I've got anxiety, anger, and resentment issues. See the Disney movies Tangled and Encanto, minus the happy endings for references as to why I'm like this. Anyway, my therapist says that I lack boundaries. After I learn what a boundary actually is, I decide to set one for myself. That is, I'm done playing D&D at 10 p.m. I'm pretty happy that I got such an easy boundary as my first time setting one. So a day before our session, I let everyone in our D&D chat know. Me. Hey, just a heads up, I'm gonna go to a limit of 10 p.m. for myself for all future D&D sessions. Cleric. Okay, why's that? Me. I'm not getting enough sleep and I feel like shit the next day, and then spend the rest of the weekend playing catch-up. No one in the group has a problem with this, except for Cleric. He keeps mentioning that he doesn't think two hours is enough time to do anything. Finally, he says, Cleric, I'm finding it difficult to sympathize as I try to accommodate everyone to be here at eight, even though I'm scrambling with putting the kids to bed and I'm not able to catch up on sleep because I'm routinely woken up at 6 a.m. and then I'm back to chasing kids around all day. Translation, you don't have any problems, try being a parent. I asked him what his deal was. Cleric, because you just said, this is what I'm doing, boom, end of discussion. You didn't discuss it with the group at all, you just did it. Me, it sounds like you're suggesting that unless the group decides that my reason for leaving is valid, that I'm being inconsiderate. This devolves into an argument, which Bard quickly diffuses and suggests we talk about it over voice chat after the next session. 
The voice chat happens, and Cleric is still pissed that I didn't consult the group about me leaving. Me. I want to go to bed, or just want to stop playing. You guys can do whatever you want. Cleric. You're ending the game early before the group is done playing. See, after I decided on 10 p.m. for myself, Paladin and Rogue thought it was a good idea, and they decided two hours was enough D&D for them, too. Cleric now sees me as some kind of ringleader who turned Paladin and Rogue against the rest of the group. The argument continues with Cleric pushing me. Cleric. Why this particular boundary? Me. Because it's my bedtime. I get to choose when that is. Cleric. Yeah, but why now? Why are you so fixated on this particular boundary? Why do you feel that you need it so badly? At this point, I'm speaking about as calmly as I can while internally I am freaking out so much that my hands are shaking. I explain that in the past I've always just gone with the flow and done what everyone else wanted as opposed to checking with myself to see what I wanted to do. Just be a follower. As long as the group is happy, it's all good. Ah, late night d and It's something that I personally struggle with a lot. I mean, all you gotta do is take a look at my upload schedule to see that I am not the best at time management. Time flies when you're having fun, and D&D is a lot of fun. The first one-shot I ever ran, you know, the same one where my homebrewed T-Rex one-shotted the party's cleric, lasted from 1 p.m. to 1 a.m. Mostly because I thought I could shove an entire campaign's worth of material into a one-shot. You can even see this on the first one-shot we ran over on the Dice Goblins channel. Crispy's Tavern, RPG Tales, Critical Kunik, Crow's Perch, and I loved interacting with each other's characters and the world that Artificial DM made so much that we accidentally turned the thing into a five-session mini-campaign. That's just how D&D can be. You get lost in a fantasy world, and the next thing you know, it's two in the morning, you left your kids at soccer practice, and now you gotta sleep on the couch because the wife is pissed. This is simultaneously the best and worst part about RPGs. It's fun, but your health and relationships should not suffer because of it. For example, I would never give up going to the gym to play D&D, because lifting weights is very important for my mental and physical health. My workouts are non-negotiable when it comes to scheduling stuff like an RPG session. Is it selfish? Maybe a little, but it's okay to be selfish in moderation. In fact, it's healthy. Role-playing games are incredibly fun, and I recommend people of all ages and personalities give them a try. But at the end of the day, they're just that. Games. I am now trying to be more authentic and transparent in my relationships, and that means, as just one example, if I don't want to do something, I state that I don't intend to do it. I try to reassure Cleric that, this isn't about you, it's about me changing past unhealthy behavior. Both DM and Bard try to appease Cleric and not rock the boat. Cleric isn't backing down on this, and the longer it goes, the more angry he becomes. And I'm starting to get pretty pissed, too. At one point, he says, What about me? Why don't I get my needs met? The chat ends with nothing being solved. A couple of days pass without me talking to the cleric at all, which I'm totally fine with. Then I send a message to reach out, which goes, Me. Hey, just checking in. Wondering if you want to come over face to face and chat and kind of clear the air on this. Cleric. Yeah, I would like that. I've also written some stuff out, just processing my thoughts and feelings. Do you think it would help if I just, you know, sent it? Just so you could see where my head is at? Me. Um, sure, if you want me to take a look at it, I'll read it. Couple of hours later, he sends me a two-page text document of the most batshit insane stuff I have ever read. He starts with a title, The Facts So Far, then itemizes every talking point we've previously had, complete with quoted conversations and dates to mark exactly what took place and when. He then writes a blurb about his thoughts and feelings about each thing I said or did. All of his conclusions are completely warped and twisted. 
Like, remember when I tried to explain Cleric my past unhealthy behavior? This was twisted into Druid's comments imply to me that the scales are uneven and all of the times that I have given in this relationship somehow aren't enough. I also interpret this to mean that all I give in this relationship is not even worth one hour of time, and that is what hurts me the most. It starts getting really crazy when he starts sharing his thoughts on relationships. He nutshells them as energy in and energy out. See, Cleric keeps track of the amount of energy he puts into every relationship versus the amount of energy he gets in return. If he feels like he's giving more than he's receiving, he pulls back from the relationship until the other person makes up what they owe. He seems to put relationships on a hierarchy, parents at the top and single childless people at the bottom, because he is a parent and in his mind he's already giving as much as he can. And since his responsibilities are so taxing or unavoidable, every non-parent friend should accommodate him simply because they are able to. He then accuses me of never truly accepting his decision to become a parent, ending the letter with, maybe it was inevitable with my choice to have a family. I wish nothing was changing, but I have to accept the fact as others change the way they act and the energy they devote. I need to understand and align with the effort others are putting into this relationship. My jaw is through the floor at this point. I honestly have no idea what to say. The ego, the martyrdom, the fucking entitlement. Him pulling back from the relationship to get the other person to prove they care about him strikes me as emotionally manipulative and childish. I don't really respond other than thanking Cleric for being honest and that we'll talk about it more at our meeting. Somehow, I convince myself that he'll be reasonable. Yeah, I know. My own stupidity impresses me sometimes. The day arrives and I am panicking. I have a habit of throwing myself into reverse whenever people are upset with me. Sorry, yep, I was totally in the wrong. I was having a bad day, I don't even know why I thought that, etc, etc, etc. Only to beat myself up later for not standing up for myself. I remind myself what this is all about. When I'm allowed to go to bed or stop playing D&D, and there is no way that I can see another person has the right to dictate or demand compromise of someone else's autonomy. So I make a statement that is so concrete that I can't backpedal from it or I'll look like a complete moron, which goes something like this. Cleric, this conversation I think is a long time coming. Okay, first, before we start, I need you to understand, I did nothing wrong. I have nothing to apologize for. I have nothing to be forgiven for. He didn't like that. In retrospect, I think he went to this meeting completely sure that I would apologize and just fall in line like I had in the past. Instead, I pointed to the letter that he sent me and referred to it as a friendship audit and accused him of treating me like an employee going through a performance review. I tell him the letter describes a transactional relationship. He disagrees and says that's how relationships are. It's give and take. And that in a friendship, the two people owe each other. I have no idea what that last part means. But just a tip for anyone reading this, don't enter into any relationships where scorekeeping is a thing. I tell him that I was still pissed that he belittled me in our text chat by putting my reasons in quotes and comparing them to being a parent. He sees no problem with his actions, doesn't apologize, and pretty much just says that he doesn't understand why I'm making such a big deal about it. Because I have so much more free time than he does. He then complains about his needs and wants again. What about what I want? What about my needs? 
And man, all I gotta say, this is all coming from a man whose parents paid his way through college, has a high five or low six figure salary, in his mid 30s owns a home in the suburbs that he paid off before the age of 40, and I know this because he bragged about it on social media, and has a wife and two kids. Basically the entire American dream. And he is bitching about one fucking hour of my time. Things continued to devolve. The best part was when I tried to explain to Cleric that he did get his needs met. Me. Cleric, you keep saying that no one is accommodating you, but the group already did. You told us that you can't play any earlier than 8pm because of your kids. We all agreed that's us accommodating you. That's us meeting your needs, not the other way around. Cleric. No, because first I had to get Mrs. Cleric to agree to our sessions. Then I'm still trying to get my kids to go to sleep, which is difficult and hard on me sometimes. And if they wake up during our sessions, Mrs. Cleric has to handle them by herself. That's us giving to you guys. So now I'm indebted to his wife, too. I forget what happened to cause this, but the conversation takes a weird turn when he starts to talk about all his responsibilities at home, stress from kids, and Mrs. Cleric. And then he says, I haven't really thought about the transition from college student to family man. Just for context, our college graduation was over a decade ago. And that's when it hit me. D&D was never about fun for him. It was all about escaping. He has everything he wants out of life and he's still unhappy and has no idea why. I see a man who had an idea of what marriage and family life would be like, but the reality isn't what he expected or wanted. He's in the middle of a midlife crisis and expects the D&D party to be his emotional and mental life preserver. Oh, God, I see this a lot whenever I see people talk about the benefits of RPGs, and I'll be honest, it makes me cringe a little bit each time. Of course, I'm talking about the escapist elements of the RPG hobby. Now, I want to preface this by saying that there is some merit to using D&D as a form of therapy, especially for troubled youth who are learning how to express themselves in healthy ways. There are tons of acclaimed psychologists who have started using RPGs as tools to help those struggling with mental illness. But that's the thing. These are trained psychologists who know what they are doing. Once again, leave it to the internet to take something good to the unhealthy extreme. I often see these internet reprobates you know the kind, exclaiming, OMG, playing my fifth tiefling bard is how I cured my self-diagnosed anxiety and depression. Now I'm totally stable and my life is perfect. Personally, I'm terrified that people who are actually suffering from mental health problems are seeing these success stories and getting the wrong idea. Role-playing games don't make your problems go away, they just make them easier to ignore. Want to know what else makes your problems easier to ignore? Drinking until you pass out into a bowl of dollar store pretzels at 2 p.m. every day. But we're not exactly seeing articles claiming the therapeutic benefits of doing that, now are we? Being 100% dependent on one thing to manage your stress is not a good thing. That's how you get scenarios like what we have with Mr. Cleric here. When something as simple as losing a player at 10pm sends his entire world into a tailspin. At that point, the RPG is no longer therapeutic, it's parasitic. The argument also brought up a lot of issues that I had with Cleric in the past that I had either ignored or buried. Now I won't go into specifics, but back in college I would complain and talk shit about him behind his back constantly. I would get so angry and frustrated with him. I stopped because I told myself, a good friend accepts the bad parts of their friends, not just the parts they like. Now, I can't really think of any good points about Cleric. In college, it didn't occur to me that I just never really liked him in the first place. But here I am, 20 years later, and my eyes are wide open. Cleric has always been like this from the time we first met, entitled, narcissistic, self-pitying. 
He seems to purposefully surround himself with people who have submissive personalities to feel in charge of the friend group. At the end of our argument, Cleric tells me that he doesn't understand my need to have this boundary, but that he will accept it. However, he does so with the most bitter and resentful look I have ever seen him give to me. To me, he looked like an angry little kid who wasn't getting his way, and I could see this bullshit resolve at the edges of his expression. He saw himself as being gracious and selfless in that moment, a good friend, which honestly sickened me. At that point, I played a few more sessions, but it felt empty. I couldn't get over that look and the fact that he clearly didn't respect me. So I left. I told the DM, remember Cleric's best friend, about why I was leaving. DM was my friend too. I found out that Cleric had already talked to him beforehand. DM said that he understood the gist of our issues, without asking me my side of the story. He then tells me that relationships are about compromise, and that it's not about one side winning and one side losing. Both sides win and both sides lose. The entire exchange came off as condescending dad talk. Looking back, I don't lament the end of these friendships. I'm focusing on bettering myself, exploring my interests, and enriching my life. It's funny how many stories I've read about friendships ending over D&D. It makes me think that it might be the truest test of a healthy friendship. I still like the game. Paladin is taking a stab at being DM and is planning a smaller campaign with just me and Rogue. And I am really looking forward to it. End of story. One thing that really irked me about this story is this weird parental hierarchy that Cleric based his friendships around. Now, I'm way too early in my life to even be thinking about having kids, so I'm not going to talk about how being a parent is or isn't stressful. But I got a feeling that it's a f***ing nightmare. Regardless of how terrible raising a kid is, I know for a fact that it does not elevate your status above others. And it certainly doesn't give you the right to invalidate another person's boundaries that they've tried to set to improve their own lives. OP's journey towards self-improvement is something that I think should be adopted by way more people. And I would like to congratulate OP on continuing to make those healthy choices. As for me, well, probably gonna keep getting drunk and passing out in bowls of dollar store pretzels. Now before we go, let's take a look at this week's Gallery of the Drink. This week's fan art comes from viewer Brain Otega, who has masterfully animated the channel's intro. Greetings, adventurers, and welcome back to the Den of the Drink. Oh boy, that was hard to listen to. The animation was beautiful, but uh, it's always good to look back at your old work just to see how far you've come, and I can confidently say that my line delivery and sound quality has improved quite a bit from back when this line was recorded. Thank you again, Brain Otega, for submitting what I hope to be the first of many animations to be featured in Gallery of the Drake. If you'd like to see your artwork featured in Gallery of the Drake, be sure to send it to the email in my About section. Fan art is my favorite part of doing YouTube, and it means the world to me that I can inspire artists like you to create artwork like this. With the story over and artwork displayed, we're gonna go ahead and wrap up. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you feel like supporting the channel further, my Patreon link is in the description. I would like to thank you all for listening, and I hope to see you next time in the Den of the Drake.